Hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can make a cool dynamic level loading like this one. You can also set the time in between these blocks. And you also can choose the East type you want to use, like for example the Out Cirque. Okay cool, let's jump right into it. Before we start, you have to make sure that you have the DoTween library installed. So to check that, go to Window, Package Manager, and there you should have the DoTween asset installed. If you haven't, I provided a link in the video description and you can download this and then go to this plus icon and install package from disk. I prepared a little scene with objects from Kenny, um, link to this awesome dude is in the video description. Um, you see here some floors, some fridges, and yeah, some walls, and uh, everything I have um, as a child object from my world. You see, if I disable this world, everything gets disabled. So, this is basically the hierarchy we have. Um, one big object with all world objects uh, as a child. So we can easily access them as children. Okay, cool. I already created a world spawner script and let's jump right into it. So what do we need? We need a list of game objects. Of course we just take all the children but we want to save them in a variable. Also we need the time to spawn, the east type from our do twin library and the initial high from where the blocks are falling. So we have this private variable which is a list of game objects called spawned objects where we want to store the children of this game object. Then the time to spawn, as I already mentioned, the east type and the inner tie. Cool. So let's populate the list. So what happens here? We iterate through the list and deactivate all game objects that we have in the scene. So we have a clear scene to start from. But what is our game plan that we know what block comes next? Because if you see the hierarchy right here, these are not even sorted correctly. So the first thing we have to do is to sort our list. And we do it absolutely simple by just comparing the x and the set value. Back in the code again, we first have to ensure that this list is not null or not empty. And then we can already start the sorting. Okay, as already mentioned, we want to compare our game objects by the x and the set value. Therefore, we need to get the current position of the transform object. So let's save these here. Cool, and now we just can compare these both. Cool, and now we can check if this comparison is zero, because if it is zero, then these both are on the exact same x position and then we want to compare it to the set value. But let's encapsulate this in our own function. Yeah, much cleaner. So now that all of our world objects are sorted and we can now iterate through these objects and can animate them. But because animations can take longer and longer, we want to not use a normal for loop, we want to start a coroutine and use the i enumerator for that. And within this i enumerator, we can use a for each loop and then yield return the wait for seconds to have the time in between. But first things first. We just want to activate this game object because we deactivated it in the first place and want to yield return the wait for seconds, but we already want to calculate the time to spawn. Therefore, we're just dividing the time to spawn by the game object's count. Cool, so this is our first approach. Let's have a look how it looks like. So everything should load in two seconds. It start from Y4. And the east type is the out back because I love the look of that. It's a bit more cartoony, I guess. Cool, so as you see, all these spawned objects are getting activated over the time. Now the next step is to use this east type to animate them. With the installed package do tween it is super simple to do that. But before that we want to use the initial height for our game object. So therefore we have the spawned object and want to transform this position. So we want to just add the vector 3.up times the init high. So the vector up is a short for one in the y direction. Because you want to let the spawned object fall four blocks, as we calculated here, down we want to move them. So we move this by doing the do move y variable from the do tween package. So we have the end value of zero because we want to move from four to zero. 
we want to have the time to spawn as a time and we also now want to set the ease type so we want to choose set ease ease type cool so let's have a look super cool now you have a dynamic level loading system thanks for watching feel free to comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and we see us in the next tutorial bye bye